Hey, hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to perform GCP infrastructure as a code using GitLab CSG tool and Terraform as infrastructure as a code. As you see in this PPT, this PPT depicts my demo. Here, I'm going to show you how we need to set up a repository at GitLab and how to configure the required configurations in the GitLab so that it gets authenticated to the GCP that is Google Cloud Platform. And henceforth, we can manage the required infrastructure on the Google Cloud platform with using infrastructure as a code, right? So indeed, this, so this video is going to help you to understand how we can do the required configuration, how we need to do the required, you know, infrastructure as a code at GCP, right? All right. So this is like a, a starter to, you know, how to manage uh, uh, your infrastructure at GCP with using infrastructure as a code, especially here we are using GitLab as a CACD tool. Right. So here the flow of this video or flow of this lab would be something like this. Say you have a GCP developer or the developer who is managing the infrastructure at GCP that is Google Cloud Platform. So you need to manage that infrastructure with using infrastructure as a code, which is a you know the modern way of managing your infrastructure at cloud providers. Right. And here we're gonna use a Terraform as a programming language, which is used for infrastructure as a code, right? And then we're going to compile or we're going to do the required CI/CD job that is continuous integration, continuous deployment with using GitLab as a tool, right? So GitLab, it provides a version control and also it also provides a CI/CD capability as well, right? So the flow of this demo would be something like this. A GCP developer who is writing the infrastructure in the form of infrastructure as a code will keep the required Terraform file in the GitLab repository. We're going to show you how we can create the GitLab repository in the GitLab, you know, uh, uh, GitLab account that you have. So into that repository, how do we need to manage the required Terraform file structure? How to manage the required, you know, uh, uh, the credentials that is required to authenticate to the to the to the GCP, uh, you know, the GCP project, and henceforth get the required authentication, and then start to provision the required infrastructure at the GCP, and finally store the state of that particular infrastructure in the GCP natively itself, right? And finally, the user will gonna consume that infrastructure. So this is how the basic is. Yeah. So your developer would be using any kind of VS Code or you know any kind of VS Code or it could be any other IDE tool which is used to you know do the coding. Actually, you gonna do the you know Git pull, Git push. Yeah. Basically, which is interacts with the you know the version control tools. Then the GitLab is you know is like a, a predominant I can say you know a, a CI/CD tool actually in the market, which is helping you to manage your version control plus and also, you know, it also helps you to do the required CI/CD jobs as well. Yeah. All right. So this is the basic flow of the, uh, uh, you know, of this demo. Now I'm going to quickly walk you through the two step here. So first one, how did I set up the required, you know, the repository? How did I configure the, you know, the required variable on that repository at GitLab side? And then finally, I'm going to walk you through the code that I, you know, that um, that is required for this demo. And finally, we're going to see, we're going to see. So basically, you know, we're going to see that how does actually, you know, we are achieving the required infrastructure as a code with using, you know, a Terraform here, right? All right. So in this case, the prerequisite is, is you should have a GitLab account. Yeah. I already have a GitLab account. So this is, this is the, my GitLab account. And if I go to the, uh, you know, the, my uh, uh, basic project list. So there I see that, you know, I have three projects as of now. So in that one, GCP hyphen infrastructure as a code is my project basically so this is the project you know, which is actually hosting the required you know um, you know gitlab hyphen ci.yaml file which is actually a workflow file of gitlab and then i have the required dot tf file which is a terraform file which is meant to provision the required infrastructure at gcp you know at gcp account basically right so once this is, is there you know this is how i did a setup if you don't have the your gitlab account you can you know indeed you can activate your own free gitlab account from you know basically from the gitlab company yeah and then you can create your own uh, projects like gcp hyphen infrastructure as a code and then can manage these info you know then you can manage these uh, files and folders accordingly yeah all right so this is how i set up the you know uh, the gitlab uh, the gitlab side of this demo all right now i'm going to show you uh, the other side that is gcp right so I have already activated uh, a free, you know, so basically that's what the banner you see, you know, you saw just earlier. So this is my free GitLab subscription, uh, free GCP subscription. And in this subscription, you know, I'm getting like nearby 90 days of, of worth $300, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, free service which has been provided by GCP. Thank you very much for that. Yeah. And, you know, henceforth, you know, the people like us or the company like us, you know, is, is an opportunity for us to, you know, explore the Google Cloud and try to identify, you know, the right suitable services for, for hosting your workloads. Right. So in this case, what did I did is, you know, for this uh, demo purpose, you know, we need uh, uh, basically we need a service account. Uh, so for that case, what we did is I have went to the IAM service that is IAM and admin services of the Google Cloud. So underneath that, you know, there is an option called service account. Go to the service account and then you can create a service account. So for now, I have already created a service account, something like this. So I'm going to show you how you need to create a required service account. So why I'm going and jumping here to create a service account? Because in this lab, you know, we are doing an infrastructure as a code and we need to interact with the Google Cloud you know account and henceforth we need to provision the infrastructure that's the reason you know we are going a service account based mechanism of authentication to create you know to to establish the required authentication with the gcp and and then henceforth provision the infrastructure with using the terraform yeah all right that's the reason you know my step is starting from service account so once you let's say you know you have a google cloud uh, account and then you are went into the iam and admin page and then you know you're gonna go to the service accounts there is an option called create service account click on that and provide your service account something like this for example i'm gonna give it as a test right and then descriptions could be provided here uh, then then say create and continue next yeah and then here you know here it will ask you you know grant this service account some some access right so if you click on this one so you see the list of access that you can provide on this service account so basically uh, editor and owner are like you know like owner is the highest editor is the second highest pr privilege that you can go you can give it on your account basically so uh, for now you know i have i have uh, uh, given uh, uh, you know editor permission so let me give it as an editor permission again in front of you so for now i'm just creating a dummy service account which which just this is just only for your um, uh, testing purpose okay so i'm going to go to the continue i have given editor permission which is the second highest level but in your case at the at the production level you know try to give the minimum permissions basically so this is a grant users access to the service account so basically i'm not going to touch this one this is an optional and i'm going to click on create one right so once you click on create so basically you know in my account i have uh, two service accounts basically so one is which is i have already integrated and i'm going to continue with this one but for your purpose you know i just created a test uh, you know the test uh, service account Currently, this service account does not have anything, so you need to just click on this one. And then, you know, so there are two steps here. First, you create a, a blank service account. And then to that to that service account, you can activate the keys, actually. So for that case, you know, I'm going to the go, go to the keys, right, and click on add keys, create a new keys, yeah. And then here, you know, you can give it as a JSON keys and click on create, yeah. So once you click on create, basically, you know, it's going to download the required, you know, credentials that you can use. Uh, you know to interact with the uh, you know the, the google cloud all right so i'm going to open that uh, for now um, so i'm going to show you that and how does that key looks anyways i'm going to delete these uh, secrets uh, uh, credentials eventually after completion of this video recording yeah so please do not try it from your side so you're going to fail it for sure all right so in this service account if i open this one so this is what basically you know the gcp creates us as a service account the type here is a service account this is the you know my project id this is the key and this is the private key blah blah and so this is the uh, client email yeah all right and this is the authentication credentials it actually adds basically you know this json object at this dictionary is a kind of a set of information that gitlab will use to establish the required authentication with the gitlab and hence both provision the infrastructure right all right so once this has been done you know i'm gonna pause it here and we're gonna show you the list you know let's let's go to the next steps okay so what is the next step did i do right so first one i created a service account now now let's go to the go back to the uh you know your project okay so in this project let's say you have a, a blank project and indeed you need to create the folder structure something like this so here i have created a creds okay so there is a, a folder called creds and underneath that the service accounts.json file which is the thing but you know this file which we ju just now created the content of this file has been copied and pasted in this uh, in this you know uh, in this you can see right so this gitlab uh, you know provides you an interface through which you can see the configurations of the files or the data of the files yeah so here is go right so this is what i have kept it underneath the gc infrastructure and then i have the uh, four other files you can ignore the dot md file so I have the gitlab.ca file and I have the other other uh, you know the backend and main and provider files 
which I'm going to walk you through the, you know, immediately after the next steps. Okay. So here there's a one more thing we need to do is, is, you know, we need to configure the secrets. Okay. So the secrets that we, uh, that we have downloaded here by creating a service account, we cannot use it as it is. Okay. So to make the, uh, the GitLab runner to make it very securely consuming, we need to create a CACD variable. So for that case, what I would do is I'm going to go to the CACD option of number project. Currently, I'm in a project called GCP hyphen infrastructure as a code. I went into the CACD and then I'm going to go to the, uh, you know, basically if I go to the, uh, sorry, I'm going to go to the settings. Yeah. So, you know, so to, to configure the, you know, the environmental variable of the repository, we have to go to the settings, not to the CACD. So apologies. So I will go to the settings in the settings, you know, you go to the CACD. So this is what actually makes more appropriate, you know, the, uh, the, the things we need to follow. So the earlier, this is the like, you know, CICD is nothing but, you know, that is where you actually look at the workflows. If you go to the settings, so setting is the place where we, you actually, you know, configure the required other things, the supporting configuration that you needed for your infrastructure as a code would be available in the settings options of the GitLab, right? And then here we're going to go to the uh, variables. So there is option called variables, click on expand. And here, you know, we're going to create a variable called you know service account so i have already created a variable called service accounts again i'm going to show you that and how did i create that so click on add variable and put the value of your you know the uh, variable equal to service account and in this one values you know you need to keep, keep a value which is very like something like this okay so the value would be so whatever the content of this dot json file has to be copied and we need to convert this content into a base 64 encoded so why i'm doing this because uh, so that you know so that uh, whenever the gitlab runner uses it it uses in an encoded format format rather than you know rather than a plain text all right so for that case what we are doing is we are encoding it to a base 64 so i'm using the online tool called base 64 encode.org right and in that one i have put in put in the my required content and it is been now you know so you see it is been encoded something like this i'm going to copy that right and then go back to the settings cicd options in that one you are adding the variable and put the value something like this okay so once you put in the values and click on add variable eventually you will end up with creating a variable something like this okay so this is the another configuration that you need to maintain on the gitlab repository so in my case my gitlab repository is gcp infrastructure as a code all right so this is the configurations which i did on the gcp not only after you know i created a repo Onto that repo, I went into the settings and created a variable as well. So this is a second step apart from the file structure creating within the repository, right? All right. So then what did I did is there is an once I my you know the the repo is created, there is a clone option here, right? So you see um, there is a clone option. So I just click on the clone. I use the this HTTPS clone URL, copy this URL, and go to the VS Code, right? And just do a clone here. So to to clone it, you know you can go to the uh, version controls and see you know see there is a clone option put it here like this yeah and hit enter right basically that will end up with you know cloning the repository and open that same repository and this is how the repository would look like okay so now i have completely walked you through the you know the folder configurations uh the gitlab repository configurations the gcp account side service account configurations and you know encoding the your service accounts right and then comes the you know the how did i manage the you know the terraform infrastructure as a code in the gitlab repository right so that is where i'm going to walk you through now so this is since this is a very simple demo i just wanted to show you that you know it does authenticate to the gcp and gets the required connections to the gcp and provisions the infrastructure and keeps the state into the gcp storage account itself right all right so for that case um, you know so as i said we i have created a you know um, a folder called creds under that folder you know we are still keeping the content that is of the service account content and this is needed for you know gitlab machines or gitlab runners uh, uh, you know this is needed for gitlab runners to uh, you know uh, get author authentication from the uh, from the you know the, from, to the to the gcp basically so basically you know gitlab runner will going to use these credentials and get a required you know authentication authorization to the gcp yeah all right so I know we're gonna keep these configurations as it is and now gonna we're gonna go to the next one that is dot gitlab hyphen ci hyphen yaml file yeah so this is the you know basically when you go for the gitlab uh, you know when you go to the enterprise ci cd tool like gitlab you know 
so basically this is how you know we need to create a workflow file that is with a file name with starting with dot git lab hyphen ci dot yaml file okay and this if you keep a file name with this option or with this name you know basically it, it automatically identifies that you know yes um uh, basically you know it, it basically identifies that uh yes you know it has to be this this is the workflow file you know it has to be invoked automatically um you know when when somebody invokes it basically yeah so this is the actually you know basically the workflow file which actually orchestrates or runs the terraform file so here um so in my case you know what i'm doing is i'm going to write this i'm going to walk you through this file right now and then we're going to walk you through the uh the other files of the you know this for this uh particular repository that is um you know gcp have an infrastructure secure right so in this one which is very important file so here it contains nothing but you know just a yaml file and it contains certain you know the the syntax that we've been form of you know format actually basically so here first one we are actually keeping the image so the image is nothing but you know this is the definition of your gitlab runner machine okay so here the name of my machine is something like this that is hashicorp terraform colon light okay so this is my image name uh you know with using this image only it will try to provision the required you know uh gitlab machine basically it would be a part basically in the from the back end or they could be using the you know kubernetes i don't know but i'm just predicting yeah and then in the end points you know basically we're gonna give the certain you know uh, values like user bin and this is the syntax you know you can keep it as it is and you know since my workflow here contains running the terraform files that's the reason we are using hashicorp image but in in other case for example you want to run the python code you want to run the you know say java code you want to run the go code you know maybe you need to change the image accordingly and then comes the another uh, you know the task name that is before script so before running the script what it actually has to be do it and that is what this definition tells about so first one it has to run these you know five commands basically so basically before script before executing the stages it has to execute the scripts and that scripts contains five commands one is remove forcibly remove if there is a file with the name like dot terraform and the next command is check what is the terraform version that is terraform hyphen version is a command that is going to execute and then it will going to create a, a directory called make directory which is uh, uh, creds okay and then what we're going to do is you know it going to uh, uh, you know it going to echo the service account decode to the decoded from the base 64 and then it going to upload that same into the uh, you know upload into the same into the uh, service accounts are json okay so i'm going to show you that actually so uh, if i go to the uh, you know basically what it actually does okay if you remember you know in the previous step you know just a, a minute ago i have just uh, uh, just a couple of minutes ago we went to the settings we went to the cicd and then we went to the uh, uh, basically to the variables and in the variables you know we created a service account okay so this is this is the you know repository environmental variable which has been referenced here and then we are running a command called echo that variable decode from the base 64 and upload into a file called service account.json file and run a terraform in it yeah so that is what basically it does so in that case you know if you do not keep these these credentials on your repository repository that is okay right which is a secure okay in fact you know in fact this is the command which is actually doing that you know in the sense this file is been you know this file is been you know for example if if i can tell you this one for now what i'm going to do is i'm not uh, i'm just going to show you the first let me show you the natural and then i'm going to show you the you know the other ways okay so basically this makes more sense right because basically we cannot keep the you know credentials of your gcp on your repository because you know you're gonna you know you're gonna or basically or you are exposing the securities yeah and then we are running the terraform minute and then finally you know it has the three stages which actually needed for a terraform that is validating the terraform planning the terraform and applying yet yeah so basically these three stages are being you know highlighted some here here you know declared here and their definitions are being you know defined down the line okay so this was this the name of the stage is validate and it actually runs a terraform validate command similarly plan okay so plan is actually you know it runs a command called terraform plan and you know depends on the you know it depends on this validate stage yeah and the artifact it going to create is is a file path you know uh, that is a file name with the name with the name like plan file yeah similarly apply so basically all these three commands are running a terraform file, you know terraform commands that is terraform uh, init uh, terraform validate terraform uh, plan yeah and terraform apply okay and finally when you know so the final stage of this cicd pipeline is being invoked manually because to make it more precise and you know and you can click on the button like apply only after manually so in the sense for example you need to review the plan and once you are confident on the plan that you know what is the infrastructure that is going to changes 
okay so then only you can click on a apply manually and then henceforth it runs the command that is terraform apply hyphen input false and and, and actually uh, actually you know uses the plan file which has been created in the above stage all right and it also depends on the plants okay so basically it makes sense because we are using the plan file yeah all right so this is how dot gitlab hyphen ci.yaml file is been created i'm going to go to the back end so back end is nothing but as name says back end dot file is the file which is actually you know setting the required terraform back end okay so as you know every terraform you know terraform indeed needs a back end actually so okay so if i go to the uh, you know so so this is the file which actually sets the terraform back end so here uh, the required versions you know the required version is of the terraform is is greater than 1.4.2 which is the latest as of now uh, by today's date actually and the back end is here is you know gcs that is a google cloud services basically and the credentials you know the credentials it is supposed to retrieve from this file so that is what we are telling uh, you know the the terraform to pick up the required credentials from this file and then the bucket so bucket is the place where actually the terraform stores the state file okay so that's the reason i'm going to take you to the uh, one more uh, thing that is a prerequisite you need to maintain on your google cloud okay so so you go to the storage in the storage you go to the buckets you know and you need to create a bucket something like this that is uh, you know so basically uh, geek ops okay so basically you know i am not going to uh, uh, use this bucket so i'm going to just delete it off and i'm going to create a new bucket okay so say delete yeah so to delete it i need to do a delete like this and i'm going to give a, a fresh bucket name here right so what is uh, uh, you know so just uh, let me refresh it so i will going to create a new bucket uh, for this demo purpose say cloud uh, uh, you know cloud uh, quick uh, labs uh, uh, gcp bucket yeah so i'm going to see gcp uh, underscore bucket yeah so this name is like a globally unique so make sure that you give a globally unique name or else you know you may not be able to uh, uh, you know the create the s3 bucket so this is let it be us i'm gonna give the default so this is uh, a standard uh, then you know the how to control the object it's gonna standard so so basically this is how we actually create the you know the uh, cloud storage bucket in in gcp and i'm gonna click on create so basically which creates a bucket for me and and say i'm gonna say confirm yeah so once the bucket is been created so basically why did i do you know why did i create a bucket is because i'm going to use this bucket to to act as my you know uh, the state file storage okay and that's the reason you know i'm going to change the bucket name as well here all right okay so with this you know we are how this is how we configure the terraform backend similarly if i go to the main so this is the you know the actually main.tfl is a file which actually creates a gcp resources are nothing but you know the infrastructure in the gcp basically so here again i'm creating one more uh you know a dummy uh, resource that is just a google cloud uh storage bucket okay and the variable name is out expire okay so within this flower bucket we are giving the parameters required to spin up the google storage bucket that is name location a uh, first destroyed true and public access enforced equal to enforce yeah and here we're gonna give uh, some unique name say say you know cloud uh, um, so i'm going to give the same bucket name plus some modified yeah so this is i'm going to create it as a infrastructure as a code yeah so this is my actually so since this is a demo which will help you to get a confidence uh you know to spin up a resource at gcp with using gitlab as a cicd tool and with using cicd with using the terraform as a you know infrastructure as a code right henceforth i'm just creating a piece of infrastructure that is uh you know a, a storage bucket all right then i'm going to go to the provider so provider is the one more dot Im very important file in the terraform that is provider.tf file here basically you know we're going to setting the required provider okay so terraform is like an application in that one you need to have a plugins okay so basically providers so providers are you know something like you know you are importing the specific uh, you know the sdk is required uh, to interact with the you know to interact with the gcp yeah so here provider is google yeah that's a google cloud and the credentials are been you know been configured from the uh, gitlab machine that is to this path yeah and the project is this is my project name and the reason is this one yeah all right so with this you know i have successfully shown you uh the the, the code walkthrough of this particular uh repository now what we're gonna do is we're gonna commit these changes all right so let's see i just say updated in demo yeah so i'm gonna commit this now i'm gonna just commit and check if our pipeline goes fine and provisions the required infrastructure okay if i go to the buckets list currently we have only one bucket so we're gonna create a one more bucket with using cicd pipelines yeah that is with using uh, gitlab uh, terraform right and invoked from the pipelines okay so here you go so currently i'm in a gcp hyphen infrastructure as a code repository 
and I see that you know currently the pipeline is running here and it has been you know it is currently validating it so if I can open this one so this is a purely live demo so that's the reason you know so I'm going to make it this uh, very real-time experience for you here you go this is how it, it shows you know the first validate state has been passed and if I go to the jobs again so uh, you know I'm we need to show to the the next stage so if it now let me go to the next uh, uh, job basically so this is plan actually so it's actually now running uh, you know the the uh, stages okay so if i go to the uh, uh, the gitlab so in this gitlab you know we have like three stages one is validate plan and apply so currently validate is passed currently executing the plan looks like plan is also passed actually so basically so this is how it looks if i go up so job name is plan and currently you know you see that it has executed successfully all green uh, the terraform version has been occupied uh, credentials has been you know credentials has also been set up right and then um, you know so it has established the connection henceforth it has identified that you know hey i'm going to create an infrastructure in the gcp and then you know, i'm going to add a, a resource zero destroy and zero change okay so eventually you know it it indeed told us that you know basically yeah in fact this has told us that you know hey i'm going to create an infrastructure in this gcp uh, in this gcp this project and this is the infrastructure i'm going to manage yeah all right so i'm going to so it has not but still if you if you observe here it has not executed the another uh, task okay so if i go back to the uh, job jobs so in this one there is a one still pending job okay so if i go to the uh, jobs there is a one manual job is still waiting for uh, run the job okay so if i go to the pipelines and we're going to see the pipelines and uh, and yeah so this one uh, yeah pipelines passed yeah so this is the updated demo so this is what this just now i committed right and in this one stage if i open it it has completed two stages but it is currently waiting for apply which is you know why it is waiting for apply because if you see here here we are telling to run this command that is terraform apply apply this particular plan file but when when it is manually approved okay that's the reason it is currently waiting so let me hit hit this actually so and we're going to see that you know the bucket is being provisioned successfully so i will i'm going to just open that stage and i'm going to show you the lively that you know how does it actually works so basically uh you know as you see here it's getting executed now and this is the recording is you know purely live time okay so that's the reason there is no cut and there is no editing here and it is like a, a real time experience okay so currently if i can tell you in with this diagram so we, this, this developer has set up the gcp repo written the terraform code did the required configuration on the gcp so that it can get authenticated and then when it invokes you know provisions the required infrastructure in the gcp and then aws or you know so this is not aws user this is like a basically uh, yeah so the business users maybe i'm just going to change this value so this is uh, gcp users so we have a gcp users using uh, you know the infrastructure yeah all right so all right so now let, let's see if the infrastructure has been provisioned here indeed okay so it has it has passed through the infrastructure you see job apply has been uh, successfully passed if i go down so uh, we should see that you know the infrastructure has been passed okay if i go down and, and we see here you go right so google cloud it has created created a bucket with this name so if we go to this one uh go to the jobs uh, sorry go to the uh, cacd go to the pipelines and we should see that pipeline going green okay so here you go right so all green okay in the sense everything went fine so if i go here uh go to the stage uh and, and see you know the see the logs and then finally i'm going to show you that you know the bucket has been created as expected which means that you know we have successfully created the infrastructure or manage the infrastructure with using uh you know gitlab and and then you know then terraform yeah all right so it it does not shows much thing so basically you see you know it has uh, successfully created uh, a file uh, you know created a, a infrastructure that is uh, a, you know that is a storage bucket and this is the name of it and it it shows that you know apply is complete completed and there is one resource is added and one resource is deleted yeah so if we go to this one and and try to try to refresh it and you know if i refresh it so basically so i'm refreshing from the console but there is a there is a button here that you know, that you could refresh here you go right so our bucket that is uh, you know cloud quick labs gcp bucket underscore infrastructure as a code has been successfully created okay so the above bucket is the bucket where actually you know terraform is keeping the state file here you go the default dot state file has been created successfully which means that you know the infrastructure of the uh, of the google infrastructure that is s3 bucket uh, that is uh, 
cloud storage bucket is been created as expected all right so with that note you know i have uh, successfully shown you the things need to be shown in this video again what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you one more thing you know uh, that is a very important thing is you know so this one to empty okay so basically i just wanted to show that you know you don't need to keep these credentials uh, you know um, so we're going to do a one more experiment and then we're going to conclude the uh, basically okay so i even though i have created a creds and the service accounts.json file actually it is not required okay so let's see if it is required so i'm going to make it empty and and just click on you know uh, uh, so when you make it empty in the sense basically we don't have we are not storing any credentials in the repository yeah so i'm just say, show you that you know credential scripts demo yeah so this is the final demo and we can conclude the you know the this videos uh, you know basically uh, the part actually yeah so currently i'm syncing the changes to the my upstream branch that is uh, uh, main branch here we go so the main branch synchronization is, is successful and now we should see a, a job should be running here and and you know i'm expecting it should go green everything so let's see you know if it goes green basically if it passes the uh, plan job then you know basically you know then then we are actually done with it yeah so if i go here and, and click on the validate yeah let's see you know what validated is actually doing so basically it's validated and let's go to the another job that is uh, that is to the next job so uh, and currently it is running uh, a plan job okay so if i go to the plan job so basically if it has the real you know required uh, a connection achieved then you know the plan should say that you know there is a uh, zero changes okay so because in the last release you know it has actually done the you know required configurations this time it should not do anything yeah so if uh, uh, if i can show you this one installation is done and and then if i go back to the pipelines and uh, this is the pipeline basically it got passed so which means that you know so it has done the job basically okay so if we go to the uh, the logs of this plan and and i'm going to show you the artifacts right so job is succeeded so initialized uh, cleaning the variables uh, okay so job is succeeded terraform is succeeded okay credential has been done uh, plan here you go right so we have executed a command called terraform plan and output uh, plan um, uh, file and it clearly telling that you know no change is required okay so basically which means that you know you don't need to keep the credentials on your repository so why did i do in a two step is you know so that i make sure that you know you are confident on the the configuration so okay so even though if you do not keep these uh, you know the credits.json file it is not at all required because you know we are encoding the required credentials in the form of base64 encoded and putting it at the you know the your um, uh, gitlab repos uh, you know uh, settings variable right underneath the settings you know we are going to the cicd in that one we are putting in a variable and that is indeed been you know indeed been used by you know pipeline and basically we don't need to uh, keep the you know credentials base so what does it means is basically it is very secure and you know very streamlined uh, infrastructure secure deployment yeah so if we go to this one so uh, you know i will just going to hit the enter and and just complete the you know the the final stage yeah so i'm going to just apply it right away and we see that you know that it it will also go green and it will not do anything yeah all right so by this uh, now you know we have uh, done the required you know uh, end to end uh, uh, showcase of the how to do the required infrastructure as a code at the you know um, at the at the google cloud yeah all right so here you go it has successfully applied a terraform as well so indeed you know so when there is a rear credentials are been configured then only you now it will actually work right and at the end you see that you know i have executed terraform apply pointing to this uh, plan file and it it is confirming that you know there is no changes required yeah so basically which means that you know this bucket is been still managed even though we are removing the credentials from here right all right so with that note i have uh, uh, successfully shown you the things need to be shown in this video from scratch to end okay finally a kind request please do subscribe my channel that would really encourage me a lot with that note thank you thanks a lot and see you in the next video